One of the most annoying things of having a planted aquarium is the algae. And so our goal is always to be balancing the lighting and the nutrients so that the plants are super happy and outcompete the algae. Hi, I'm Irene with Aquarium Cop, and in part two of my Algae Control for Beginners series, I wanna focus on talking about nutrients, having the proper food for your plants so that we can really control and minimize the algae. So when it comes to food, you know that humans have that um, food pyramid where you're supposed to eat lots of fruits and vegetables at the bottom of the pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid, fewer amounts of healthy fats. And in the same way, plants need to, at the bottom of the pyramid, eat lots of macronutrients. So things like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And at the top of the pyramid, you want trace amounts of micronutrients, things like magnesium, iron, and zinc. And the plants need these nutrients in the proper ratios so they can really grow big and healthy. Now you may have seen this kind of barrel diagram where it's called Liebig's Law of the Minimum. And he developed that principle for agriculture saying that plant growth is limited by whatever the scarcest resource or the limiting factor and not the total amount of resources available. Meaning, you know, if you have a lot of potassium and a lot of calcium, but your nitrogen level is pretty low, your plant growth is capped by the nitrogen. However, if you increase the nitrogen to match the potassium and calcium, then the plant will grow even bigger and better. And we use that basically principle to figure out, you know, how can we make sure there are enough of all of these nutrients, again, in the right ratios that plants need? And at least for me, I like to look online, just kind of do a little Googling to see what are the ranges I should be shooting for, for potassium, for nitrate. And everybody has a different opinion just because, you know, maybe somebody is setting up a high tech tank with these parameters versus a low tech tank. And everybody has kind of different setups, but at least for me, it helps because then I can see the ranges I should be shooting for, for each nutrient. Treat. Now there is a common belief that, well, the fish waste in my aquarium, it provides all the nutrients that my plants need and they grow big and healthy. That may be true for a minority of people who are just blessed with uh, very good tap water or just whatever their plant and fish stocking level is. But for most of us, that is probably not going to work. Uh, I looked at some research papers where they were actually studying the fish waste produced at major fish farms for tilapia, catfish, rainbow trout, seeing if they could use that waste from the fish to fertilize plants. One thing to note was that the nutrient levels were definitely different based on the species of fish, whatever food they were feeding, the environment, the, the natural tap water in that area. And then also I saw that, you know, sometimes some nutrients like nitrogen might be really, really high. And then things like potassium would be significantly lower in proportion. You may be asking, well, I don't get it. How does nature then balance the ecosystem that it has? And that's because there's a lot of things in nature that we don't have in our aquariums. You know, they're going to have rotting leaves and driftwood and fish bodies. They're going to have lots of algae, which we typically remove from our aquariums. Things like bird waste falls in, even the erosion of rocks around them. They all contribute various kind of minerals and nutrients that are not available in a more, rel relatively speaking, a more sterile ecosystem that we have in our own homes. And that's why, at least for the majority of us, we do need the help of fertilizers in order to supplement a lot of those missing nutrients that nature normally would provide. Now, there are two main popular methods of fertilization. The first one I would call EI dosing estimative index, which means you're basically flooding the system with tons of nutrients so that you never have to deal with Liebig's law of the minimum. You never have a limiting factor for the nutrients because you have tons of it available. And in that case, you're going to focus on tuning the lighting and the CO2 or carbon dioxide gas injection. Usually this method is preferred for heavily planted tanks. You know, you need a lot of plants in order to take up that amount of nutrients. And then it is going to be much higher maintenance because every week you're going to, at the end of the week, do a massive water change to flush out the nutrients and then restart the tank with a fresh, carefully measured out ratio of more fertilizer. So lots of fertilizer, lots of water changes, and then lots of pruning because in that particular kind of environment, a high-tech tank with lots of nutrients, plants are going to be growing pretty quickly. 
versus the other method is called lean dosing. And it's probably more suitable for low light, slower going plants. And in this case, you wanna provide just enough fertilizer for the plants to use up not too little and not too much so that the algae won't be able to take advantage of that. And then in my case, I prefer lean dosing. It's just a little more, you know, a lower maintenance kind of tank. I personally like to set up more low tech aquariums. So that is what I'm gonna kind of focus on for the rest of my video, focusing on, again, balancing the nutrients. And then if you saw my previous week's video, balancing lighting, and then usually there is not CO2 injection. So how do I figure out my fertilizer dosing regimen? And usually what I like to do is start with the Easy Green all-in-one fertilizer. It's a liquid fertilizer and basically has all of the nutrients in the correct ratios. It's just a really great starting point. And then I like to follow the directions on the back of the bottle. So in this case, I have the pump head version there is a nano bottle as well for nano tanks but for the pump head version it's basically one pump per 10 gallons of water once a week if it's a low light tank and then twice a week if it's a medium light tank and that's a really good starting point to really hone in that amount then i use these kind of multi test strips and then on the back there is a measurement for nitrate and i want to try to keep the nitrate amount between 20 to 50 ppm based on my dosage of Easy Green. If I have like way too much, you know, 75, 100 ppm nitrate, then in that case, I will do a water change and then I will dose up back up to 20 to 50 ppm nitrate using Easy Green fertilizer. And then after that, it's just gonna be a lot of kind of waiting and observation. So we have this nice nutrient deficiency chart for plants that I like to use. And then you can see like, oh, what symptoms are my leaves showing? And then does that match up to a nutrient that they might be lacking? So for example, if you see holes in your leaves, um, if you look on the chart, that's usually an indication it's missing a macronutrient such as nitrogen, potassium, and phosphate. But if you really can't tell by the holes, you know, which one it is, then I would turn to using test kits. So that's a really better, you know, more accurate way of really honing down what the measurement is. So in that case, I purchased, you know, I have the nitrate from the um, multi-test strips, and then there's a phosphate kit as well as potassium kit that I got. And then based on that, I was able to hone down like, oh, I'm actually missing uh, phosphorus and potassium, even though I have plenty of nitrogen. Another case I had in the past was I noticed that some of the leaves on the top of my Pocostem and Stellatus were kind of twisted. Again, based on that nutrient deficiency chart, that can sometimes be a sign of missing calcium. So same thing, I got out my GH test, realized, oh, it's pretty low. And then I just Googled online found out mm, maybe four to eight degrees GH is a good amount for plants. And then I used Seachem Equilibrium Minerals to dose up that amount because my water is so soft that apparently it can't grow plants very well and it needs help. Now, if you have heavy root feeders like cryptocorines, sore plants, bulb plants, they tend to like to feed from the substrate. So in that case, you will need to either provide a nutrient rich substrate or if you have an inert substrate like gravel or sand, then just go ahead and give them some easy root tabs. And then that is like, you know, mineralized topsoil, red clay that contains all these delicious nutrients that they need. And again, I just observe my plants. Anytime they're kind of looking wilty, I know that they need more root tabs. And I'll just stick a few underneath the plant based on how big the plant is. So maybe a smaller cryptocorine may get one or two versus a giant aponogeton might get 10 root tabs. Finally, I would definitely recommend keeping some kind of aquarium diary or journal. I personally like to use Microsoft Excel, like a spreadsheet on my computer, but a lot of people like using paper and pen and a journal to record down, you know, how often are you doing water changes and how much, you know, what's the fertilization schedule that you're using? What are some of the water tests that you did? And what is the data that was, that you got from that? And that will help you formulate again, what is your fertilization routine from week to week? Just because, you know, an aquarium is a living ecosystem, things are gonna change. If you have live bearers that are just breeding out of control and you've started increasing the feeding, that is gonna impact the amount of nutrients coming from the fish waste. Uh, on the opposite side, what if your 
you've got a lot of plant growth and you've decided to prune them back or maybe remove some, they're not gonna be absorbing as many nutrients and so maybe you need to back off on your fertilization schedule. So all of this is really good information. And at least for me, it's kind of one of the parts about Aquarium Queen being that I actually enjoy of knowing that I am keeping my aquarium balanced based on the changes that are going on in my observations. If you missed out on my previous video on lighting or you want to catch the other episodes of Algae Control for Beginners, I'm gonna post the playlist over here. Otherwise, enjoy Nature Daily and I'll see you next time. Bye.